Hey folks, welcome to Resolving Post. My name is Gary, and in this video, we're going to create this really cool locked on stabilization effect on DaVinci Resolve Fusion. It's a really fun and simple effect that only takes two additional nodes to create. So anyone, even those who are relatively new to the Fusion page, should be able to create this kind of effect very easily. So stick around and let's just get right to it. So this is a clip that we're going to be working with. We're going to apply the lock on stabilization on this clip, specifically to the nose of the Husky right there in the middle, and just making sure that the nose stays in the center of the screen at all times. And we'll do this by using the fusion page. So let's just hop right into the fusion page. And usually before I edit on the fusion page, I want to make sure that my snap to grid is turned on. So right click on the node panel, go to arrange tool, and then select to grid. And once that's been enabled, your nodes will snap to the grid, which makes for easier viewing and organizing. All right, so now let's go ahead and add the tracker node to our pipeline. First, select the media in node, and then on your keyboard, press shift spacebar, and then type in tracker or TRA for short, press enter. And then what you should see now is a new tracker overlay on the upper left of your viewer. And this tracker overlay consists of two boxes, an inner box and an outer box. The inner box is called the pattern box, and the pattern box defines the pattern or the object that we want to track, whereas the outer box, which is also called the search box, is used to define the area that we want DaVinci Resolve to search for the object that we want to track. And now what we want to do is scrub through our timeline to analyze where in the timeline do we want to define our pattern. This is pretty important because we want to find the frame that best represent the overall shape and size of the Husky's nose throughout the whole clip. So I think right over here on frame 120 is a good representation of the object that we want to track in terms of size and orientation throughout this whole entire clip. So now what we want to do is just reposition the tracker to the center of the nose by dragging on the handle located on the upper left corner of the pattern box. Next, we want to resize our pattern box so that it fits nicely right around the Husky's nose. And we'll need to zoom in just a little bit to do that. And then we can drag on the edges of the pattern box to resize its shape like so. Okay. And now let's do the same with the search box. Okay, once done, we can zoom back out. And then now let's take a look at the inspector. Right over here, we have the Husky's nose. This is what we'll be tracking. And over here, we have the option to track the RGB alpha luminance of the object. So red, green, blue, alpha, luminance, and auto. So in this case, let's just track with auto. And then up over here, we have frames per point. We'll leave at its default at one. But down here in adaptive mode, this is something a little bit more important to consider. The one that we want to select for this video clip is every frame. And what every frame adaptive mode does is DaVinci Resolve will analyze the pattern that we want to track. And then it'll continuously update the size and shape of the pattern on a frame by frame basis. And this is especially convenient for us as it helps us more accurately track the object for this particular clip since the Husky's nose, the object that we're tracking, is always changing in orientation and shape as it's running across the snow frame by frame. Before we begin tracking, keep in mind that we are not starting from frame 0. We are starting from frame 120 or as indicated by this number right over here. And a quick brief explanation. The middle button right over here is to stop our tracking. The button to its right is to track forwards from the current time frame. This is the one that we'll be using since we are going to be tracking from frame 120. And then the button to the far right is to track forwards as well, but to start tracking from frame zero. So let's begin our tracking by clicking on the button right over here. And while it's tracking, just keep an eye out for any jumps or skips, which may mean that we have to redefine our pattern or reposition our tracker. And once you're done tracking, you'll be prompted with this message. Click on OK to dismiss the message. And then have a look right over here to the right of your inspector. You see this green line over here. Uh, this indicates the quality of the tracking. Um, and as you can see here, the quality is quite good, probably around 95% accurate, but we're still not quite done yet with tracking. We still have the first half to track. So let's go ahead and reposition the playhead so that it's on frame 120. And we can do this by either dragging the playhead to frame 120 
or by using the input field right over here and just typing in 120. So let's go ahead and click on this button over here to track backwards from our current time frame. And just keep in mind to be on the lookout for any skips or jumps while we're tracking, which may indicate a port tracker and which may require us to do the tracking all over again. Click OK to dismiss this message. And OK, so we're pretty much done with this portion of the tracking. And what comes next is giving it that lock on stabilization effect, which is the fun part of this video. So let's go ahead and click on the operations tab. Under operations, select match move. And under merge, select BG only. If we play this back, you'll notice that the object that we tracked is staying in its place while everything else moves around it. But of course, we are still not finished yet. There are obvious issues here that we have to address. But what I want to do first is reposition the object that we're tracking so it's dead on center of the clip. So first, go back to the trackers tab by clicking on the button up here. And then go all the way down to the bottom of the inspector and adjust the X offset and Y offset wheels until the object is positioned right in the center of the clip about here. Okay. And once that's done, let's go ahead and play this back and see how it looks. Much better. And then lastly, we'll need to get rid of these gaps that were created from the stabilization. In order to do that, we have to mirror our edges and then zoom into our clip just a little bit. So to mirror our edges, we have to go back to the operations tab. So in the inspector, click on this button right over here. And then next, click on the drop down menu next to edge and then select mirror to mirror our edges. Let's play this back real quick and see how it looks with our mirrored edges. Much better. But remember, we still need to zoom in. So let's go ahead and add our transform node. Press shift spacebar and type in transform. Press enter. Then go to the inspector of your transform node. And then let's increase the size so we can zoom into our clip. Okay, now let's play this one more time to see the final result. All right, and that's all there is to it. It only took us two nodes to creating this lockdown stabilization effect. So I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please do leave a like. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one.